to lift the fog. To remove any confusion in order to establish the proof, you never know. Maybe people, after clarifying the truth to them, would accept faith. And this is our experience. In our very short lifetime, we have seen people, once they recognize the truth, they accept faith, and they realize that they have been deceived by their religious leaders, by their elders, by their four parents, by the entire society, but now it is time to lift the fog. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered Mu'ad ibn Jabal to invite the people of the book first to, not to the prayers, not to fasting, not to perform hajj. We do not impress people by our ways of worship. Rather, what really impresses people the most is that we only have one God. If you want to communicate with God, you don't have to look for an intermediary. You don't have to go to a church. You don't have to go to the leader of the Muslims or a righteous person. You can just communicate with him directly. How do we know that? We know that through understanding and learning our religion. Brothers and sisters, Muslims and non-Muslims, I gotta tell you something. All humans are inclined into sins. We do commit sins day and night. And Allah the Almighty declared that He is the oft forgiving the most merciful. He is gonna forgive all sins only if the person repents unto Him while believing only in Him as the only true God. Allah the Almighty says in a couple of verses in Surah An-Nisa, one of them is number 48 and the second is number 116. He says, <laughs> وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah does not forgive shirk, does not forgive certain partners to him in worship. How could you say that God has a son and you want him to forgive you? How could you pray to an idol or a statue or a cross or whatever? Then you ask him to pardon you on the day of recompense. Yet he forgives any sins other than associating others with him in worship. And whosoever commits shirk and sets partners to Allah in worship has indeed committed a great sin. That is indeed the greatest sin. In the other verse, number 116, it is sealed by saying, And whoever associates others with Allah in worship has indeed astrayed a great deal. Totally went astray. In order to explain to Muslims and non-Muslims as well, our religion, what do we believe in? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have presented to us the most fantastic and the most comprehensive narration, hadith. It was transmitted to us via the great companion Abdullah, the son of Umar ibn Khattab, and his father Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, was the one who witnessed the incident. The hadith is collected by Imam Muslim, so it is a sound hadith, it is a highly sound hadith. The explanation of this hadith will take us insha'Allah so long, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, uh, give us a, a long life in order to be able to encompass its great meanings. The hadith says that Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said, once while we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there appeared before us a man whose clothes were exceedingly white. I want you brothers and sisters to pay close attention to every phrase and every segment of the hadith because it signifies a great meaning. It is not just a, a bedtime story. Umar al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said that one day while we're sitting with the Prophet, peace be upon him, a man appeared before us whose clothes were exceedingly white, whose hair was exceedingly black, young, and uh, he did not appear like he was on a journey. He was not journeying. And uh, no signs of journeying were to be seen on him, and none of us knew him. What is this? So he's not from town. Meanwhile, he doesn't seem like he just came from out of town, because he looked neat and nice, exceedingly white clothes, and exceeding black hair. He came all the way, he walked until he sat next to the Prophet wasallam, right across from him, facing him. Then he rested his knees against the knees of the Prophet ﷺ and placed his own palms on his thighs, on his own thighs, not on the Prophet's thighs.
Then he started asking questions. The way he asked questions made it seem to the audience that this guy is non-Muslim. He wanted to know about Islam. He's inquiring about Islam, what Islam is. So he said, oh Muhammad, and that's why he did not say, oh Prophet Muhammad, which indicated that he did not recognize him. Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. So, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Islam is to satisfy that there is no God but Allah, and to satisfy that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah, the five pillars of the deen, to pray five times a day, to fast during the month of Ramadan, to give zakah or alms if you are financially capable, and to perform hajj if you have the means. Guess what? The questioner said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Sadaqt. He said, you have spoken the truth, you have spoken rightly. So Umar al-Khattab, among the rest of the audience, the companion said, فَعَجِبْنَا لَهُ يَسْأَلُهُ وَيُصَدِّقُهُ We're amazed that if he says that you have spoken the truth, you have spoken rightly, why is he asking him then? If he already knows the answer, then he presented another question. So what was the first question? He inquired about Islam, what Islam is all about. The second he said, uh, Inform me and tell me about Iman. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Iman is to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, not messengers, plural. Not just His messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, His messengers. And the last day, and to believe in the divine destiny. Both it's good and it's bad. Then he said, Sadaq, you have spoken rightly. Who said so? The Kushner, the man who's wearing exceedingly white clothes with exceedingly black hair. He's not from town, nor does he appear like he came from out of town. Very confusing. Then he asked him, tell me about Ihsan. So the first question was inquiring about Islam, and the second was inquiring about Iman. He's upgrading himself in the questions. And the third was about Ihsan. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ihsan is to worship Allah as though you're seeing Him. And while you see Him not, He truly sees you. Oh, this is a very high quality of the deen. Then the Kushner said, Oh Muhammad, tell me about the hour. The hour refers to the day of judgment. Uh, they ask you about the hour. The hour in Arabic, the hour literally means an hour which consists of 60 minutes. But once the word the hour in the definite format is mentioned in the Quran, then it is referring to the day of judgment. One of the names of the day of resurrection is a sa'a or the hour. So he asked him, inform me about the hour. And the question obviously was directed towards about when will it occur? When will it take place? It's time. And please pay close attention in order to sever our relations with fortune tellers for good. In order not to believe anyone who's going to pop up anywhere on in the screen, on the media, and newspaper and says that, I predict the Day of Judgment uh, uh, to take place in 20 years from now. Whether this person is a Muslim or non-Muslim, they're definitely lying. Here Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was the dearest to Allah, the most beloved to Allah, the most knowledgeable human being ever. The questioner is asking him about the hour and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the one who is questioned about it knows no better than the questioner. It's another beautiful indication here. He said, neither me nor you know anything about its time. When will it occur? When the Day of Judgment will take place? So the questioner said, okay, at least tell me about some of its signs. The Prophet ﷺ said, number one, that the slave girl would give birth to its mistress. We're going to solve the puzzle and explain in details the meaning of every phrase and shed uh, more light on the entire hadith. It is a very beautiful hadith. We will learn a lot. Non-Muslims as well will gain a lot of benefits and knowledge from the explanation of this magnificent hadith. The first sign is that the slave girl would give birth to, its, to her mistress. And the second, that 
the day will come, he prophesies, when you will see the destitute, the poor, the shepherd, competing with each other in constructing lofty buildings. The tallest, the world's tallest buildings are being built now in the Muslim land. Those signs are coming to pass. And then he took himself off. And he stayed for a time. Who's saying that? This statement is said by Umar ibn Khattab, the narrator. One of the audience, he said the questioner just took off. Uh, while I stayed behind, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked me, he said, Ya Umar, O oh Umar, do you know who was the questioner? The etiquette of the companions. What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, once they're asked about anything, even if they know, they would say, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O oh Umar, it was 